I gotta tell him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I finally decided to just buckle up and do it. You've been asking me all the time. Anybody who knows anything about me knows that I can get real estate agents to the first page of Google in 30 days or less. And I always allude to how I do it, show little snippets, but I've never shown the whole thing. Here it is. I'm about to show you absolutely everything that we do, how we get people to the first page of Google in 30 days or less. No holds barred. Everything that you need to know. So if you want to get to the first page of Google in 30 days or less, just look at the calendar right now, follow this video, take the steps, literally 30 days from today, you'll be on the first page of Google. I guarantee it as long as you do the, every step that I say, um, as long as you follow everything to the T, you'll be on the first page of Google. Now, a part of me is telling me that maybe I shouldn't just reveal exactly how I do this. This has been one of the biggest money makers for my business is getting people to that first page of Google um, in 30 days or less. It's, it's really taken me to new heights, taking my business to new heights. However, here are the secrets. So let's get into it. So getting to the first page of Google is going to generate more exposure, get more listings, therefore, uh, and it's also going to allow you to start receiving inbound leads on autopilot. So what we're going for is to get onto the first page of Google. Yes, what that will do for you is everything that I just said about the exposure, the listings and the inbound leads. And this will happen in 30 days or less. That is not a typo. That is not an over promise. In fact, it's an under promise because we've seen this happen in literally a weekend. Um, so like I said, let's just get right into it. So what we're going to talk about today is number one, why reviews equals listings and why we're taking advantage of reviews to get to the first page of Google. Number two, we're going to be talking about why it's a blue ocean. People just are not taking advantage of this. And it's honestly, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's inexcusable because if you don't know, then you don't know. However, if you do know, which you will, it's inexcusable to not take advantage of this. And then the third thing I'm going to tell you is how to take advantage of it. Actionable steps. So first off, why do reviews equal listings? Well, reviews are make or break for any business or service. So nine out of 10 consumers read reviews before making a purchase. Um, almost 80% of consumers say that they trust reviews as much as personal recommendations, which means that eight out of 10 people will read an online review that says this was garbage or this was great. And to them, it will be the same as if their friend told them. So you want to talk about referrals. If your business is based off of referrals, off of other people saying you're great, then this is the first thing that you need to be doing. It drives me crazy when people say like, no, it's okay. I don't need to get to the first page of Google. I build my business off of referrals like this. That's what this is. That's what this is. Anyway, keep going. 55% of consumers will read at least four reviews before deciding to work with a service or a business. So if you're just relying on referrals, then you're really hoping that you've got one or two friends out there singing your praises. But if you can get those reviews, then you're going to have a plethora of people singing your praises online. It's going to be evergreen. Anybody can look for them whenever they want. You don't need to be waiting for your friend to have a good conversation and there will be plenty of them. So if those 55% of people who need to read at least four, they'll have plenty. Don't worry about it. 97% of consumers who read online reviews from other consumers also read responses from businesses. So make sure that you respond to anybody who leaves you a review, both positive or negative. Guys, obviously you don't want negative reviews, but if you have a negative review, it's an opportunity. Look, nobody's perfect. Everybody's crossed somebody at some point in time in their life. I'm sure there's been somebody who wasn't thrilled with my service as well. I mean, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. However, I'm sure that there were, um, but you know what? It's about how you respond to them. Oh, I can think of someone actually, somebody who I don't really understand why this didn't work the same thing for them. I gave them a year subscription to my thing for free. So I had a negative experience. I gave them something that was extraordinarily high value. I just gave it to them because I don't know why it didn't work for them. Something must've been wrong with the back end of the system. We've actually fixed it since. And then lastly, 80% of consumers will consult reviews before working with a local service or business. So reviews aren't like, yeah, like maybe, I don't know, I should get around. Like, no, there's no like playing around with this, right? Re this is going to make or break your business. So stop playing around. We need to get reviews, but let's get into the rest of the video and then I'll show you what else needs to happen as well. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to, we're going to get you guys involved. This is going to be interactive right now. I'm going to show you a couple of examples and you tell me who you would use. First off, you've got two real estate agents. You've got John Smith and Jane Doe. So John Smith have five stars. Jane Doe has 4.2 stars. So who would you use this circumstance? And if these were your only two options, obviously in, in this case, there's nothing wrong with Jane Doe probably, 4.2 is good. However, you'd use John. But what if I showed you this? What if I showed you that Jane Doe had 342 reviews, whereas John Smith only had six? Well, now probably I'd think more about Jane Doe. I mean, I'd still possibly use John Smith, but Jane Doe is obviously now the front runner. 
what if this happened? What if the negative reviews were so bad that Jane's Jane's reviews were that her receptionist rudely scolded someone for being two minutes late and they ended up getting forgotten about? And that's a pretty that's a pretty harsh review, especially in a person in a relationship based business. Let's say if those were the negative reviews and then look at the positive review of John Smith, where they're saying that, yes, he's new, but he really cares and blah, blah, blah. Like, again, the plot thickens. Now, maybe John Smith is the front runner. So now here's the next step. Let's say John responded. Let's, I know John, in this case, is a five-star review, so he didn't get any negative reviews. But let's pretend they both got the same negative review. Jane doesn't respond. John responds and says, I'm so sorry to hear this happen. Here, let me give you a free lunch. Freaking $15 free lunch. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, you know what? That I really did have a bad time, but he gave me a free lunch. I could tell he obviously is remorseful. And somebody else looking at that is like, honestly, if the receptionist leaves me stranded, I'd be happy. I'll just take my 15 bucks and be out of there. So like every negative negative review is an opportunity to create something positive. So um, really what I'm trying to articulate right now, what I'm trying to illustrate, I should say, actually, is that a negative experience could also turn into an opportunity. And that when it comes to reviews, when it comes to this sort of reputation management, it's a full story. It's not just one thing at a time. There's a whole picture and you really need to think about what the whole picture is and paint a whole picture for anybody searching for your business that you are the best option for them to go to. So Taking to step two of this, I'd say mini webinar, um, really, it's just like a giant expose of, of everything that I do inside of my business. So uh, I may regret posting this video in the morning, but so be it, let's do it. But anyway, so why is it a blue ocean? Why is it something that can easily be taken advantage of? Why aren't people doing it? Well, I'm going to show you something. Over 60% of online sales are done on Amazon. We call this the Amazon effect over here at In a Box. So think of something. Think of the last thing that you purchased on Amazon. Let's pretend... I'll give you a minute. Let's pretend it was a phone charger. So why did I, let's pretend I bought a phone charger. Why did I pick that phone charger? So likely what I did is I typed into Google phone chargers. I found one that was not $55 for, I don't know, whatever. I didn't necessarily need some 25 foot long phone charger. I got one that fit the description of what I was looking for, had good reviews. And that was it. Price was right. Reviews were good. So it turns out that 80% of people's purchasing decisions are based mostly, if not entirely, that on the product that has the most best reviews. Now, again, price obviously is a massive factor in people's purchasing decisions. However, let's pretend the price of every product was the same, right? Because you're not posting what your commission rates are on your website. So really, they only know your commission once they call you. For all intents and purposes, at this point of the journey, every single product is the same in terms of price. So the difference is quality of the product and how do they verify that? By the reviews, that's it. So 80% of people, their purchasing decision is based mostly, if not entirely, on the real estate agent that has the most best reviews. So I'm not interested in searching for 15 freaking pages of phone chargers. I'm gonna search the second, third one, whatever it is. I want that one that has 15,000 five-star reviews and it's $7, that's what I want. Right, so the question is, are you the best option according to Google and what is the best option? So, by the way, just going back to, let's say the phone charger example, let's say if there's another phone charger that's trying to compete with the big phone charger companies, whatever it is, if they're like trying to create some sort of extra like cool wiring thing, like, yeah, that's fine. Like by all means, make your product better 100%. However, you gotta get out there as well. Like you just create some different wiring, like that's not gonna change your business. You gotta get some reviews, get in front of people, have people purchasing your product and then improve it right? Anyway, so let's get into this. I'm going to show you something. If you, you can verify this yourself, if you want as pause the video, if you want, but I already did the work for you. I went to Google and I typed in realtors in a certain zip code or a certain area. So I went realtors in. So let's do this one. Sell my home fast in Jacksonville, right? So that's the keyword. Sell my home fast in Jacksonville, the entire city of Jacksonville, for somebody looking to sell their home fast, this is their options. I blanked everything out for our confidentiality. However, uh, as far as I remember, that 120 star review, that wasn't even uh, for a sell my home fast company. Like I know there are some real estate agents that specialize in just, I guess, all cash offers, quick sales, but you've got like one, two, three options on there that have zero reviews. Guys, this is the first page of Google. These are the first seven results. And of those first seven results, one of them has two stars and three of them have zero reviews. One of them has 120, which even though they don't actually specialize in this, they're just so crushing it with their reviews so that they're up there this one's 29 like okay fine this one's 31 like okay fine but the first page on a whole city on a metropolitan city in the u.s and you've got like four of them have 
basically a non-existent online reputation. Are you kidding me? How the heck are they on the first page of Google? This is the blue ocean, guys. Nobody's taking advantage of this. You go to Amazon right now. Seriously, go to Amazon and type in a product that everybody, because everybody wants a realtor. So type in a product that everybody wants, like a phone charger, like a phone case, I don't know, something, and see how many reviews they have. They'll have 15,000, 20,000 reviews because people who sell on Amazon understand. You cannot succeed in that game unless you have reviews. In this game, we don't get that yet. We don't understand that. And that's why you got people there with zero reviews on the first page of Google. Let's go to Realtors in Fresno. This guy's a client of mine, which is why I showed you. In about a weekend or a week, or it was less than a week. Anyway, the guy's in over 90 reviews. The guy started at two reviews. Like I said, in a couple of days, he went to over 90 reviews, got listings out of this, an abundance of phone calls out of this, and people are now coming to him. That's not to say that he's the end of his marketing endeavors. However, he has now a new income stream. Google is now bringing in business that he didn't have before, right? And now it happens to be this guy was in business for a little while, so I wanted to get a little bit more competitive, but we competed. He's on the fourth spot on in Fresno. I mean, he's third in terms of total reviews in Fresno, which is awesome. So if you're looking for a real estate agent in Fresno and you type in realtors in Fresno, like it's him or the, the top two, like that's it. Right, let's go here. Realtors and Simcoe. This uh, Alicia Flynn, first off, she's awesome. She's an awesome agent. She's fairly new. And as I'm sure you probably know or can even relate to, it's like, yeah, I'm willing to look after my clients 100%, but people don't know that. And if they don't know that, it doesn't really matter, like, whatever you're doing, if you got to be able to live, right? You got to be able to keep going. So you need to be in front of people so that you can do good business so that they can refer you. But if you're not getting that business in the first place, then what are we playing around about talking about customer service? You have no customers. So this lady, she had a few and then she leveraged them and then she leveraged her friends and family and then she got listings out of it and then buyers out of it and then it's starting to snowball and that's what happened. Again, not the most competitive area, but in no time at all, she was on the first page of Google. She actually got a listing in under two weeks from this. Let's go. Coming real estate agent, Lisa Waters, another client of mine. Really awesome, awesome lady, awesome real estate agent. But again, if people don't know her, they don't know her. But now she's the first for coming realtor. Again, at the time of this recording, there's going to need to be optimization happening as well to keep her there, which I mean, hopefully this continues to happen. But she's on the first page of Google. She's on the first spot of Google. So if anybody's looking for a coming realtor, who are they going to call? And the reviews aren't showing over there, but you can check it out. They have reviews. So how do you take advantage of this? How do you actually take advantage of this to get to the first page of Google? Because it's one thing to see that other people are not taking advantage of it, but it's a whole other thing to be like, okay, what do I do? The first step is claim your Google My Business page. And I'm going to tell you step by step. First off, claim your Google My Business page. And once you've done that, you're already a quarter of the way there. It's not really hard to do this. I think it's like create.business.com or something like off the top of my head. But go and claim your Google My Business page. If it's already claimed, like verify it. And if you've already done all of this, then you're good to go there. Step two, optimize your Google My Business page. I will include a link in the description below, which will tell you the 15 things that you need to do to optimize your Google My Business page. Nothing is difficult in there. Everything is very doable. It's just knowledge. Nothing is difficult. But give Google what it wants, add your information so that they know where you are, what you do, when you work, all of the stuff that you're interested in when it comes to owning uh, or looking for a local business or service. The next step is to make Google like you as a business. And that means that by using its platform, obviously Instagram likes people who create content on Instagram, YouTube likes people who create content on YouTube, and Google, same company, likes people who create content on Google My Business, obviously. So keep your Google My Business updated. Again, that same link in the description before him when I said how to optimize your Google My Business profile, we discuss how to actually post inside of Google My Business. So make sure that you go and check out that video and that will teach you how to optimize your whole page. And then once you've claimed your Google My Business page, you've optimized your profile. The last thing is ask your friends for reviews. That's it. Your friends and your clients and your family as well. It's not complicated. But the great thing is most real estate agents don't focus on their reviews. So like I showed you that lady Alicia, She's on the first page of Google with 14 reviews, or she was, she has more now, but she was 14 reviews. That's all it took. And she got listings. Now, if you can rack your brain right now and think of 15 family, friends, whatever, even if you don't have any clients that would leave you a review saying, yes, this person has high integrity, a hard worker, blah, blah, blah. Great. You could be in the same position as Alicia was, and you might be just a couple of weeks away from your first inbound listing. Maybe not your first, but whatever it is, this is very easy to get to the first page of Google, especially in this market. So here's the question that people ask though. What if you've never sold a home? This is all fine and dandy for the guy over there who's been in business for 10 years in Fresno who could get 90 something reviews. But if you've never sold a home, then you can't compete with one review. It's not true because there's performance reviews and there's character reviews. A performance review, pretty uh, self-explanatory. This guy did a great job. Character review 
is really what most, I would say most realtors, but it's really most businesses fail to leverage. You can ask your friends or your family, leave a character review and say something like, even if we've never worked together, would you mind leaving me a review to tell people that I'm hardworking, I'm honest, I'm ethical, all of the things that you take pride in that you say, I create an exceptional service for my clients. Well, if people don't know you, then you don't provide an exceptional service. You would. And that's exactly what you want people to say. It's like, this guy would provide an exceptional service to anybody who wants to work with him or her. And then that's it. So ask for character reviews. So at a glance, here's the entire process. First off, claim your Google My Business page. Second off, update your information. Make sure it's all accurate. Phone, hours of operation, address, blah, blah, blah. Step three, post on your Google My Business page. Make sure that it stays updated. Like I said, I'm going to post a link in the description below to how to properly optimize your Google My Business profile. After you've done that, ask for reviews, character reviews or performance reviews. The next thing is to interact with your audience. That's also really important. It's also in the video on how to optimize your Google My Business profile. And then lastly, watch your ranking skyrocket. I'll tell you every reason that people don't sign up with us, right? And then, because you're probably thinking like, no, I'm, I don't know. This is what people say. It seems too easy. Guys, it is too easy. I promise you, try this out. What's the worst that's gonna happen? You get a few reviews and you're not on the first page of Google and you're like, okay, well, I got reviews, but it did nothing for me. That's not what's gonna happen to be clear. But if you're hesitant because it seems too easy, guys, it is very, very easy. So that's the first thing that people say. The other thing is people say like, I don't know, I wanna wait until I get more listings before I kind of focus on my marketing, which I think is the most ludicrous thing in the world because that's like, I need to get more business before I try to get more business. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not asking for your money right now. I'm telling you to go and do this yourself. It's free. So as always, I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, please do not hesitate to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And lastly, something that's really important for me, if you did this and it worked for you, please comment below. Let people know that I did these steps and it really did work and this was awesome and it was easy, but that's great because I think sometimes the biggest obstacle that people have is themselves. And I think for anybody to watch this video and not take steps, to tell you the truth, unless you've got like a thousand reviews and nothing I said to you is new right now, unless you're already on the first page of Google, it's inexcusable for people to not take action. So sometimes just people need a little bit of a push. So comment below that you did it, that it worked. And I would really appreciate it because really all I want to see is for you to grow. So I'll see you in the next video, guys.